Hello there, it's Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and a new card making video. This is episode two of my It's a Lawn Fawn Christmas series. Today I'm playing with the Eat, Sleep, and Be Merry stamp set, which was a collaboration for Stamp Timber between Simon Says Stamp and Lawn Fawn. I got the set and I've been dying to play with it ever since. Last week I brought you this cute card and tiny gift boxes with the tiny winter friends. Now I accidentally ordered two of them and that means I was giving away one of them to somebody who watched my video and commented and that person is Christina Galero. Congratulations. Thank you so much to everybody who watched and commented. It meant so very much to me. Let's talk about today's card. So this is the Eat, Sleep, and Be Merry stamp set. It was a limited edition type thing that they do for Stamp Timber at Simon Says Stamp, and I thought it was so cute, and I had to have it. I was not lucky enough to get the die set before it sold out, but I did get the stamp set. And then I also have this cute sloth set I thought I would use in today's card. I didn't end up using it. I'm also using this amazing stamp set from Trinity Stamps, all spruce up. It's a slimline stamp set and die set. I love it. So we're going to do that first. I'm going to stamp out my background first. I like doing my backgrounds first and then kind of matching my stamped images to my backgrounds. I'm using Moss Ink from Altenew to ink this up and stamp it down. And I'm using this pressure tool. I love this thing. I didn't think it'd be something like I would reach for all the time, but I totally, totally do. I love it. So once that is all inked up, I can die cut this with a coordinating die. And what's cool about this die is it cuts out the middle. It makes a frame and it's so gorgeous. These are the things that make me happy. It's so pretty. I love it. Mm. So that's going to be the uh, kind of a background on my card, but more like a frame. So I wanted to make this um, really pop and have a lot more color to it because I'm creating a night scene. So I took some bamboo ink and a an, uh, blending brush and went all the way around this, adding that bright green ink on there. It's so pretty, but I like to layer my ink sometimes too. So I brought back the moss and now I'm just going over the very edge. So it's kind of going from dark to medium to light on this frame and wow isn't that gorgeous and if you've been around my channel for a while you knew this was coming the splatter <laughs> so I am splattering this with some white acrylic paint I'm gonna put on a lot because this will dry back lighter and I wanted it to look snowy so there it is I'm going to set that aside to dry and I'm going to work on the piece that's going to go behind this. So I'm bringing in some Distress Oxide in black soot and just blending that down this panel. I don't have to worry about the edges because that frame is going to cover it up. But I just kept going until I got it as dark as I wanted and made sure that it wasn't too white with the frame there. And now we're going to do some layered splattering first using water from the Distress Sprayer and spritzing that on. I like to let it set for a minute, then pick up the excess water. Oh, I love this look. Next, I have my Sparkle Dust. Sparkle, you know what it's called. I don't, but you probably do. You're saying it right now. Yeah, I put that on and then I'm adding on the white acrylic paint after that. So it's three layers of splatter. It's going to give me depth and it's going to have different, like some are shiny, some are dull, some are white, and it gives you depth. And wow, that's a blizzard right there. So while those are drying, I'm going to stamp out my images on some white paper with Copic Friendly Black Ink. And now it's time to start coloring. I'm going to be using these brown shades of markers to color out my sloths. I did one first to see how I liked it. And now I'm going to show you how I colored it. So my darkest color for the main part of the sloth is E23. I'm going to add that in where I want the shadows. All of a sudden, I've started coloring with my Copics where I do the darkest color first. I used to always start with my lightest and put down a layer and then bring in my darkest, shade that out with my medium and my light. And now I'm just going right for the dark, putting in those shadows, blending it out with my mid-tone and then bringing in my lightest color. And for some reason, this is what makes sense to me right now. 
or on this particular image. Sometimes I'll change it up, but I'm loving how these sloths look. I, there's a lot of different ways that you could color these with your different shades of browns and really have fun with it. I also brought in the E25 to do the little mask around the eyes. Okay, now let's move on to the branch. I'm starting with a really dark color. I didn't see the cap there. I think it's E39. And then I'm blending that out with E29 and E27. I um, need a few more Copic refills. I just got some thanks to a very special and generous friend. And um, wow, it makes a difference to have your Copics refilled. I mean, that makes me happy. It's one of those things you don't always want to spend money on, but once you do, it makes you so happy. All right, here's my red colors. I'm going to color out the Santa hat using R39 as my darkest, and then my R29 as my midtone, leaving a little bit of white space to come in with my lightest color, R24, and I'm loving that red combination. I have YG03 and YG05 for a little bit of green on my ornaments. So I'm starting with the lightest on this one because they're so tiny and then just kind of coming in with a little line, so to speak, to add that dark shadow. I also did a little bit of T2 and T0 for the white parts to add a little shadow. And now I'm just bringing in my Jelly Roll pen. It's size eight or zero eight and adding the white highlights that I love so much that just bring these images to life and I'll put that on all of the images and you can see here where I added them I like to do like a little line and a couple dots and I, it's just magic I love it so you see that candy cane there it has a two-step stamping part that I stamped with lobster ink it was really easy to stamp oh my cute look at that it's darling. Okay, like I said, I did not have the dies, so I'm using my pick scan mat and my silhouette to cut these out. So I take a picture of my stamped images on my mat, and then I'm able to open that up in my Cameo Silhouette Design Studio. Just in case you were wondering how I do it, I'm gonna show you. So once that is open, I need to trace out these images. So there's a button over on the right hand side that looks like a butterfly with a trace line. And then once I open that, I'm gonna click to select the trace area and just drag a square around those images. That's gonna select everything. Then I'm gonna click back over on that menu to trace the outer edge. There's a trace line around that now, and I can use that trace line to offset it. So I'm going to right click on these images and release the compound path so I can work with each image individually. Now the offset panel is a little star with a trace line around it over on that right hand side. So I just clicked the image I wanted, clicked offset, and then I like to set my diameter around it to be zero or point zero. 045. Once I do that, I need to now erase that original trace line. So now my silhouette's only going to cut on that red line, giving me that offset so it looks just like it was die cut. So I'm going to repeat that with all the images. Select the image that you want, click offset, set the, the diameter around it to be 0 0.045, then make sure you erase that original trace line. You can do more than one image at a time if you have some pretty easy images to do, but sometimes you're gonna get extra lines that you might have to delete, like um, if you had a, an open space. So just take note of that. Um, and maybe do them individually if you feel better about it. Once you have all that done, you're gonna click send. I like to up my blade so that it is at a depth of six. I like my force to be 24, and I do have this cut two times before I'm done so that I make sure those are gonna pop out of the page really easy. And that just depends on what cardstock you're using and your machine. So here you can see it cutting out. I kind of left the sound on so you could hear what it sounds like. It's quite loud and I was doing this super early in the morning so it seemed especially loud today. But there you can see them and I can peel them off very easily and they look as if they're die cut. So. I find doing die cuts or having the dies a lot easier, but this is a really good option. All right, so there they are. And now I pulled out this a bug deal stamp set to do an extra branch for my stocking. 
And then I added the present to the little dream bubble, the cookies to that other branch, and there's the little sloth. He's holding the candy cane and he's attached to that branch. So now we can go ahead and attach our little sloth creatures to this pine frame. You can see I'm tucking the end of the branch under those branches those pine branches, and then the end of it is overlapping on the top. So I just have a little um, cascading set of sloths. They're so cute. All right, there's this little guy. He's dreaming of the presents he might get on Christmas morning. I think it's like Christmas Eve for these sloths. Only one of them can sleep, and the other ones are very excited of what's to come. One has set out the cookies. One has... Um, his little candy cane waiting in his stocking to see what he might get. So I just added some foam tape to the back of this to really pop it up off of that night snowy sky. And then um, I was able to stick that down really easily because I made my background a tiny bit smaller than my frame, which is eight and a half by three and a half. And now I'm adding all those little extras, the little dots or circles that go to that little dream bubble. And then for my ornaments, I took a mini glue dot, put it on the back of the ornament, took a tiny piece of this silver thread and stuck it to that glue dot and then sandwiched it with another glue dot. Then it's gonna stick down really easily and I just tucked the ends of the thread up under the branch. So I hung all three of those for some extra little design elements and I think it really adds to the scene to put those little cute things in there. I love it so much. So now it's time for the sentiment. I'm going to use a sentiment from this Eat, Sleep, and Be Merry stamp set and it is so cute. It says, it's beginning to look a sloth like Christmas. I, I can't talk. A sloth like Christmas. Punny, punny saying. All right, so I'm doing this on some white paper, white cardstock, with some Versamark ink and white embossing powder. I love this look so much. And I had been without my white embossing powder for a while because once upon a time I mixed my white with my clear. That's why they're in big containers with big letters now. So a girl doesn't do that again because it didn't look good mixed together at all. So there that is embossed. Now, I know I didn't stamp this in order, but that's okay because I need it to be cut apart and put on my card um, in segments. So I'm just gonna trim around this with my scissors and then I have three little pieces. So you can see I'm gonna put one at the top, one in the kind of middle and one at the bottom. So you kind of are reading the sentiment as you're looking at all the fun images on the card. Now this one hangs off a little bit. I did go back and put a little bit of foam tape under the end of that so it wasn't like flapping in the breeze because that'll drive me crazy for a long time if I left it. So there we go, there's our sentiment. We're gonna add this to a card base that's eight and three fourths by seven and a half. I scored it at three and three fourths because I love a white frame. Next, I am bringing in this new stencil paste in pearl. It looks like marshmallow cream with a pearlescent finish. It's so yummy. I wanted to just put it on here like snow because there's so much snow in the background and all of those things and sloths are known for being slow and normally they have moss that grows on their fur because they move so slow. So in this, for instance, I felt like they should have the snow piling up on them on the branches and all the things. So I put this on and I had so much fun. I just kept going, adding more, adding here, adding there. I'm just using a little toothpick and I found if I laid the toothpick down and kind of rolled it, it would come off really easily. But the thing about this is like, it doesn't have to be neat and perfect and in a little line, you know, it's snow. It should look a little sporadic, I guess is the right word. And it was fun and it looks so cute, dried. You you know, when you tilt it in the light, you're gonna get that little pearlescent shine, but it really looks like snow. <laughs> I love it so much, so cute. And guess what happened? Yeah, again, same order, I purchased two of these. I I don't know what happened, but it's time for another giveaway. I mean, I have two, I might as well give one to one of you again. So. 
just leave a comment below. I will randomly pick a name again and announce the winner in next week's video, which next week I will be airing my video on Tuesday, back to my regular schedule instead of Wednesdays. And now it's time to make a tag. So I'm using this outside in stitched snowflake die to make my tag. I have one cut from red and one from green. I have a couple windows that are going to cover the back of those because I'm making a shaker tag. And I stamped this cute little holly. Oh my gosh, it's so cute from the magic holiday messages. And now we're going to start putting things together. So I'm using my crocodile to punch a hole in my red piece right away so I don't forget to do it so I can create this into an ornament. I also got a piece of that silver thread ready, and now I'm using my Liquid Stardust, that's the name of it, to splatter on my snowflakes. I didn't want too much going on on there, but definitely the shimmer. I did it to the green one as well. I let those dry and added my little holly to the um, stocking of that sloth, and I think it's so adorable. Now it's time to glue on the window sheet, so I just added glue around the center, and then I put some heavy blocks on the back of those so they would dry, and I thought it was time for a little blooper. This is what happens when you forget to turn the camera off while glue dries. <laughs> That's my singing in fast speed, so you can't actually hear my singing voice, because I'm not ready for that. You're not ready for it either. <laughs> so those were dry and I added some strips of foam. These are really thin so they're easier to bend around a curve and I just put them on in a circle all the way around the edge of that window sheet making really sure that the ends touched because what I'm filling this with is super fine so you cannot have any gaps for that to escape. I added a little more foam on the outer edges of the snowflake as well. So this is white sand that I bought last year or the year before at the craft store where they had stuff to make like fairy houses. And I was like, oh my word, this would make the best shaker fill for winter. It looks like snow. So just keep your eyes open for stuff like that. But you know, you could put anything in here. Seed beads, um, I have some micro beads, glitter, all kinds of stuff, M uh, mica flakes, yeah. So I took the, ad the back off of those adhesive strips, I added my twine to that hole, and then I put the two together to create a shaker, and I'm okay if the green peeks around from the back a little bit. I popped up my sloth right there in the center, and then I added some rhinestones. These are like my favorite thing right now. They're from Trinity Stamps, and they come in so many gorgeous colors, as you can see there on the right. And so I just put them one at the end of each of those arms. Snowflakes don't have arms, but I'm sure there's a scientific name for them. But that's where I put them, and I thought they looked super cute. They kind of catch the light and are iridescent and almost like I was seeing green a little bit, and I loved that. Okay, so I did some anti-static powder, as you can see, like crazy, on this black piece of cardstock and stamped, have a lazy Christmas to add to my tag slash ornament slash super cute sloth snowflake. <laughs> and then I just cut it out with scissors. And I mean, you could use any, what works best for you? A trimmer, um, I have the quick trimmer from Spellbinders, works great for these, but sometimes I just, I have to do the scissors, I get impatient. So uh, yeah, now I wanted to add this to the string of my ornament. So I just cut off the knot, strung it on there, and tied it again. So it's maybe a little bit shorter than I would prefer it to be, but I think it's still gonna work. So there it says, have a lazy Christmas. I decided I would go ahead and stick it down to the ornament with a little foam square so it didn't fly everywhere and you could always read it. And I thought it turned out so very cute. I think these two look so good together. So you give the card, you give a little gift and there you've got a magical Christmas right there, I think. So thank you so much for joining me. I had so much fun making this card. My daughter was in the room making Christmas cards as well. And we had the Christmas music on as you heard. <laughs> And we just had a really good time. So thank you so much for letting me share that with you. I will be back again on Tuesday with another It's a Lawn Fawn Christmas episode for you featuring other Lawn Fawn products and making Christmas creations. So stay tuned for that 
next Tuesday. And I will have more videos between now and then, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you're new here, feel free to subscribe. Let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave a comment to maybe win that stencil paste in pearl. I'll see you on the next video. Happy stamping! Bye!